Matthew uh, 10, verses 28 through. the checks and balances there's an old saying absolute power ruins absolutely haunted me in the hope i named so i decided to go by my middle name which is jay that's the simple part for that all right well i am uh james from shed some light if you guys would like to introduce yourselves Sweet. I'll go first. Um, yeah, my name is Elder Conde. I'm from Connecticut. I'm 20 years old, and I've been a missionary for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints for almost 23 months now. So it's been a, it's an awesome experience, really, to be a missionary. 23 months. That's almost two years. A month off. A month away. Yeah. Is that usually how long uh, the missionary trips last? Yeah, so for men, it's two years, and then for the sisters, it's 18 months. Cool, cool, cool. All right, who's the gentleman with you? I'm, I'm Elder Hartwell. I'm from uh, California. I'm 19 years old, and I've been a missionary for about a month and a half. So. A month and a half. Whereabouts yeah. in California? I live in a town called Santa Maria. It's in the northern part of Southern California, which is between Santa Barbara and San Luis Obispo. I don't know where that's at. <laughs> I know. Most people don't. I try to give context, but usually it's yeah. like, all right, I'm from cool. California. I'm also from California, Barstow. Well, actually, I was uh, born in L.A., but I now live in Barstow. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Are you familiar where Bar Barstow is? Uh, no. California's no. a big <laughs> it's a, it's 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 right in the almost... I guess if you want to say right in the middle between Northern and Southern California, uh, before okay. you get to Beaumont. Okay. Yep. Right there. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So, um, if you don't mind, we can probably get right into it, right? Yeah. Sure. Why not? <laughs> okay. Um, I'll give you guys um, as much time as you need to maybe just give. Well, not as much time as you need, but just give a. Uh, summary of what the LDS, LDS faith is. Okay. okay. So we believe that uh, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is Christ's New Testament church on the earth again. Um, something we teach a lot is that, you know, when Christ came on the earth, you know, he he atoned for our sins. He fulfilled what you know was prophesied of him by the many prophets that talked about him in the Old Testament and even the New as well. Uh, we also know that when he came here, he established an order. He established a church, a church which consisted of of a prophet at the head, and twelve apostles, and also the the authority to be able to go out and to preach as as um, Jesus Christ had given to his apostles. Um, according to the deaths of the apostles and Jesus Christ himself, uh, that church, that New Testament church that Christ had established was lost for a while. And we believe that this church, you know, this church was restored through a, a living prophet, modern day prophet. Uh, we believe that to be Joseph Smith. And through him, through him, the Lord was able to restore his church on the earth again. And we were able to receive all of the many blessings that our Heavenly Father has for us right now. So, in essence, we believe that the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is that church, that very same church that is mentioned in the New Testament. In the New Testament of the modern Orthodox Christian Bible? Yeah, I guess, yeah. The, well, we use the King James Version Bible. Yeah, um, okay. Yeah, you know. Okay. Um, so... Who, if you want, like to maybe expound a little bit more on maybe who jo Joseph Smith is and how he came about those revelations? Mm -hmm. Would you like to explain a little yeah. about Joseph Smith? So we know um, from uh, just historical records that Joseph Smith was a young boy living in New York. 
He was living in a time, as he described, where there was basically just an excitement of religion. We even see that now today, where there's a whole ton of different churches. And we know that Joseph Smith had a question, and it's a question that I think many people have even today, which is, which church should I join? Um, and from his account, he read in the Bible uh, that in James 1.5, if any of ye lack wisdom, ask of God. And so he decided that this was a great question to bring to God of which church he should join. And so Joseph Smith went into a field and asked uh, heavenly and asked through prayer which church he should join. And we, we know from his account that he saw a vision. And he saw a vision of uh, Jesus Christ and Heavenly Father. And he described uh, the vision. Uh, and I saw a pillar of light descending gradually until it fell upon my head. And I saw two personages above the brightness of the sun, whose glory and brightness defy all description. Uh, one of them spake to me, pointing to the other, calling me by name, saying, this is my beloved son, hear him. Um, and so he was, he saw a vision, much like prophets of old had seen visions. And in that vision, Christ told him to join uh, mm -hmm. none of the churches. And it wasn't because the churches were, were evil or anything, but it was because they lacked the whole uh, truth. They had bits and pieces and they were good churches and they believed in Christ and they strived to follow him. But like we explained earlier, they uh, lacked the authority from Christ himself. And so Joseph Smith was commanded to join none of the churches. And over time, uh, God and Jesus Christ continued to reveal things to Joseph Smith. And that's when Joseph Smith was able to translate the Book of Mormon, which is a scripture that we have now, as well as to organize uh, Jesus Christ's restored church which is now the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. That was a whole lot. <laughs> but yeah. I have a, I have a, a question. So um, uh, part of what I heard was kind of like the transfiguration where uh, the two apostles were nominated by Christ to go with him up on the mountain. And then that's where he was shown himself as the full deity of Christ is do the does the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints <laughs> uh, believe that Jesus is God yes we believe that he is God okay um, can you expound on that so we know that you know, God, the Father, he's, all, he's a God, you know. And we know that his son is like his father, right? And the way he was able to do that was through performing the atonement, right? We know that from the scriptures that he died and that he was also resurrected. And he had that perfect body of, of flesh and bones, just like as the father did. And so we see many times throughout wait, the wait. scriptures... So yeah. you also believe yeah. that the, the father is uh, flesh, flesh and bones? Yes. Okay. Um, okay. Continue. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay. So we see many times throughout the scriptures that, you know, the father, you know, he, he shows his will and he communicates it through the son. You know, the main example being Christ being born and preaching his gospel to the people who lived in his time period. Right. And so we know that through that, you know, Jesus Christ, he's a different person than the Heavenly Father. And, but we also know that he's a spokesman too. You know, what he says is from the Father, essentially. Okay. So I guess that, hmm. <laughs> uh, what, what, is, what, is the, what is the stance on the Trinity then? Like, um, yeah, we believe or I believe as a Christian, I, I don't even necessarily like to call myself a Christian because to be a Christian to me is to me Christ like. And I be the first one to tell you I have many flaws and many, many, many failures in life, but I follow Jesus. So as I and as I follow him, I and in reading the word of God, um, 
it, it tells me in scripture that there is Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. They are one God, but three separate entities. What is Yes. Okay. So we as the church believe that uh, Heavenly Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Ghost are three separate entities. We know that Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ are two separate people with flesh and blood, and the Holy Ghost is a spirit and is uh, God's spirit. Uh, he's his messenger. So we believe them to be three separate beings, but we, we know them to be one in purpose. So while they are three separate people, they have one purpose, which is um, to just help us through this mortal life um, and be there for us. So where in scripture does it say that, excuse me, that um, Father God is flesh? Okay. Let me just, just slip through my scriptures really quick. John 4, 24, which is simply yep. says that God is spirit and his worshipers must worship him in spirit and truth. So, and, and, and what I believe is that God the Father is spirit. Um, no one has seen him or come to know him except through the son and the personage of Jesus Christ. All And even in the Old Testament, uh, they were Christophanies where when the personage of God or the, the spokesperson, as you guys uh, uh, stated, and I so eloquently used, uh, Jesus uh, was the one who was always the one to come down and present himself as flesh. Uh, so have you guys found the scripture? Yeah, I've got the scripture. All right. So we're going to turn to Luke 24. Okay. And we're going to read it verses 36 to 39. Luke 24, 26. Yep. 36. Uh, 36 through 39. Yep, 36 through 39. Got it. Okay. Um, I don't know. You want to read that for us, James? Sure. Okay. Luke 24, 36, 39. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, why are you troubled? And why do you doubt? Or why, why do doubts rise in your mind? Look at my hands and my feet. It is, my, it is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost, not, a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, he's talking about Jesus there, I believe. That, well, actually, that is Jesus. Yeah. Okay. So I know. I believe. Okay. Let me back up. Okay. <laughs> uh, I believe Jesus is flesh. I believe that. I believe he. Okay. So he once was spirit john 1 1 tells us that in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word yep. was god and we know through skipping down to john 14 that the word was made flesh okay and so before christ before jesus was jesus he was the word and while he was the word he was spirit and when he be, he became flesh as Jesus, now as even now and today, two thousand twenty, I still believe that he's flesh. As for the Father, I believe he was always spirit, just like the Holy Spirit. And based off the scripture that I just read earlier uh, in Matthew, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, John chapter four, verse twenty four where God, the word God there is not for just any old God that is Elohim. And we know Elohim to be the God. Mm -hmm. So God, the Father, is spirit, as, as I'm able to ascertain from John 
4, verse 24. Yeah, I think another place where we we find this uh, belief of ours is actually in first or Genesis chapter 1, okay. verse 26. And this, of course, Genesis chapter 1 is talking about the creation of the world and everything. Genesis, but here it talks about Genesis, Genesis 1. 1, verse 26. Got it. And so I'll, I'll just read the beginning of my translation of the Bible. Uh, and it says, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over the earth, and over every creeping thing and creep it, that creepeth upon the earth. And so for us, when we read the scripture, we see that God created us here on earth in his own image. And we know from Joseph Smith and his description of his vision, and then Bible verses like these, for us, we believe that God is a flesh and blood because we were created with a bodies of flesh and blood that were in his specific image. Okay. Uh, um, it's 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 a it's a my my father used to tell me never major in the minors and that's not something that's uh, contingent to someone's salvation whether we believe yeah. if Father God Yahweh is flesh or not have or maybe you guys might have a question for me. No? Okay. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll think of something. <laughs> okay, so what aspect of your ministry do you enjoy the most? Oh, this is a, that's a really good question. Um, uh, I think for me, um, it's always been, you know, uh, just trying to be, for us, we always strive as just members of the church to be more Christ-like. We know we're never going to be like Christ because Christ was perfect, and it's pretty much impossible for any of us to be perfect. But I think just striving to be more Christ-like, and for me, um, that's been one of the most things I've enjoyed the most. Because um, especially during times right now where there's a lot of anger and hatred towards each other and just a lot of fighting and tension, you know, Christ always told you to love thy neighbor as you love thyself. Right. And of these other things. And so for me, it's just been serving others um, in everything that I do and just trying to love people, even the people that feel unlovable sometimes, but just trying to show them as much love. Um, while it's a great blessing to those people, I've also found it to be just a great blessing in my own life. Because when my own life is filled with more love, mm -hmm. um, I'm just more happy. And it's yeah. one of the reasons why I love uh, just being... Um, just a, a disciple of Jesus Christ. Brian? For me, uh, I, I guess it kind of goes along with what Elder Hartwell said, but for me, it's seeing the, the change people make to want to follow God or to want to get closer to Christ. Uh, like I said, I've been doing this for 23 months now, and, and pretty soon uh, my time as a missionary will be over. And Really, just like the way I've been able to see things now has just changed so much. I think as being a missionary, you know, we're, we say we, and we know that we represent Jesus Christ on the earth. So over this whole entire 23 months, my whole perspective on people has changed. Mm -hmm. I've started to see people as like legit, like literal, like children of God and how Jesus would see us. You know, in the scripture that says that uh, Jesus Christ has an immense love for us and so does the Father. And on my mission, I've been able to see that love because I've felt it for myself. And I've also seen that love change the lives of other people as well. You know, these people can be different people. They, they can be people who never heard of the name of Jesus Christ, or they can be people who already have a belief in Christ and already know what, what they want to do. But still, when we go to these people's homes and we teach them what we know uh, and see them apply what we teach them, it really it, it makes it makes me happy because I kind of get to feel the joy that that our heavenly Father gets when His children turn to Him, try to seek to be closer to Him as well. Amen. 
Sounds good. <laughs> uh, I, <laughs> I, I have experienced that too in my walk in, in my faith with, with God. And I understand that um, sometimes, and this sounds selfish, but helping other people does help yourself. Like even if you're going down, you're, in, you're down in the pits, well, you might want to go look out for somebody who's also down in the pits and try to be an encouragement to them. And as you're encouraging them, you're encouraging yourself and you've also gained a friend. Um, I liked how Elder Cart Hartwell um, said that, you know, in these times here, we are going through so, so much already. Why not, you know, speak about the good things and the positive things? The, the scripture says that think, think on these things, which are, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, holy, pure, kind. Uh, Benevolent, chaste, yeah. yeah. There you go. That verse in Philippians, I believe. Yeah. Um, yes, in the church uh, of Jesus Christ and Latter-day Saints. How does one person obtain sal uh, salvation? Okay. That's a good question. So we know, as we've already discussed, that you know the mission of Jesus Christ was to come here and to to die for us, to you know fulfill our sins and stuff like that. And Jesus Christ was resurrected after that. Mm -hmm. And so two things happened when he was resurrected. The first was that he overcame physical death. We know that by the scripture that said he has a perfect body of flesh and bones and also has established when he told Mary Magdalene not to touch him yet because he had not ascended yet into the Father. And we know that when he ascended up into heaven in Acts that he went back to his heavenly Father. And this second type of death we know is called the spiritual death. He overcame that because he was able to go back to the presence of the Father. Because of that atonement, uh, we are now able to overcome those type of deaths too. We believe that everyone who dies on the earth will be resurrected. They will be saved from physical death. Everyone will get a body, a perfect body, just as Jesus Christ has. And now I guess the, the spiritual part aspect of it is while we will be res resurrected, and yes, we will be just and be in his presence, you know, that doesn't guarantee that we will, you know, be with him him and live with him forever like jesus christ does and so we believe that in order for us to be able to to actually be able to live with our heavenly father we must be obedient to the gospel of jesus christ and his teachings okay so we a person through the lds church gains salvation by being obedient to God. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Romans 10, 9, and 10. Uh, can, can I ask a question? Sure. What does salvation mean to you? I'm just curious, I guess. Okay, so... Salvation means to me, uh, similar to what you guys believe, uh, the freedom in, of the burden of sin. Not that a person doesn't sin anymore, but the burden or the wages of that sinful act is no longer applied to the person who's made the co uh, confession of faith. Uh, once they have come to believe in Jesus as their Lord and Savior, uh, believe that he was uh, crucified on the cross, that he died and rose again, that's it. The person is saved. Uh, they still have their sinful nature, but because of the love of God that was also uh, previously mentioned um, by, I guess, all of us, um, that person would begin to want to change. There isn't anything that says that they have to, uh, but it's almost an, an, an automatic thing because the love of God is so immense in them. Now that comes down to the fact that if the person really truly meant 
that confession of faith. So let me read this uh, if, if that answered you guys' question. Okay. Yeah, I think that, that answers our question. <laughs> All right. Uh, Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Okay. As I read it there, to me, it basically is telling me that all I need to do is believe. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I guess <laughs> yeah. I'll ask another um, question. So I, we want to actually just clarify that just a little bit, if that's okay. fine. Sure, sure. So we do we teach that in the gospel of Jesus Christ, we believe that yes, the first step in like you know gaining salvation, or as you want to say it, um, is having faith in Jesus Christ. You know, and kind of using that confession you're talking about. You know, like you, you sincerely have to believe in Jesus Christ. You sincerely have to be able to, to one, accept that he's your savior mm -hmm. and two, humility to follow him in his commandments. And I think part of that sincere confession um, that you were talking about, James, was repentance. You know, that is the second step in, in us um, in trying to being able to accept the gospel of Jesus Christ into our lives is repentance. Because we know that faith leads us to action. Mm -hmm. You know, we can't just say we want to say something and then go off and do something else that's different. We know that our intentions must be sincere if we are to follow God. And so one of the one of those sincere decisions that we make is to repent of all of our sins. Uh, we're obviously going to keep sinning the rest of our life. I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. Elder Hartwell's not perfect. But that's why repentance is so important to us. Because we believe that we we have a constant need to ask God forgiveness of our sins, right? And we know that by doing these steps, by having faith and by having repentance, we'll want to make with our Lord and Savior to be able to follow Him the rest of our lives. And we believe that that first promise or covenant, as mentioned in the Scriptures, is baptism. You know, Jesus Christ was baptized by John the Baptist. And by what he said to fulfill all righteousness. So it shows to us that he was trying to be obedient to God's commandments. And we know that by that, we can also receive that, that gift of the Holy Ghost that's mentioned a lot in the scriptures. And after all that's done and said, we just have to keep continuing on our covenant path, keeping on the discipleship. You know, we have to constantly be having faith. We have to constantly be having, be repenting always. While, you know, we can't be baptized every weekend, <laughs> you know, um, we try to obey the rest of the commandments as Jesus Christ taught us, you know, stuff by like going to church, uh, helping others, stuff like that. Um, by these things, we can be on the path to return to our Heavenly Father. Amen. Um... question that comes up for me is uh -huh. what what about grace uh, uh, where is it where the, there's nothing about where in the Bible that I you have mentioned in uh, several scriptures saying that uh, we are supposed to you know uh, well I'm going to quote this one that a workman is supposed to uh, uh, study to show himself approved uh, love your neighbor as he's supposed to love himself. Um, all these things that are, well, Christ himself said that the, all the laws are summed up into these two things. Love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. Uh, and then and later on, as he's preaching with grace, he's like, there is no, there is nothing that we can do to earn the favor of God other than to accept the son as our Lord and Savior, as, as our God. Um, the what I hear from the church, um, and not just the, LD, the LDS church, um, a lot of Jehovah's Witness, uh, I believe kind of the same thing, 
is that we're supposed to be able to work towards that faith. We're supposed to be able to, we're supposed to be working towards going to heaven. But in my faith, once a person already makes that confession of faith, yes, they can, they can die in their sin and, and, and have the consequences of, of sin, which is death, the, the, the eternal death, which is damnation in hell. Or they can die, a Christian can die in, in, in repentance. And once they die in the repentance, that's the only thing, like he was being uh, 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 stated and reiterated, uh, is that uh, we need to repent. And if we die in repentance and having this, the, the, uh, the mating, the confession of faith, that's it. That's all. We're going to heaven. Uh, there, there isn't anything more to it. There isn't. Now, there is scriptures that support the fact that if you are out there doing more and as i already stated that as you grow in your faith from grace to grace there is there's a certain amount of in action that is inspired by love not by compulsion or by tyranny or by by you have to do this or you're not getting anything else from me because that's not how god works god doesn't say well you do this for me and I'll do this for you. No, that's not, that's not scripture. Um, yeah. How do you guys feel about that? So, yeah, for us, we know that God is, is a loving God and he's a, he's a loving God, but he also, um, you know, we learn about the judgment and being judged for our sins. He's also a, a just God. And so we believe that um, in our sinful, you know, we all die as sinful. And we needed some way to be redeemed of those sins, which is why Christ was uh, sent to the earth to to die and uh, sacrifice the himself. Propitiation for our sin. And what that sins. means is that all of our sins were paid for by him. Yes. At that time. Right then and there, still stamp, signed, still delivered. But for the person who has, maybe he's lukewarm. Or maybe yeah. he hasn't made the full confession. Maybe he's just he he sees that as something that he wants it to do, but he's walking the fence. He's still saved, I believe. Yeah. But he's walking the thin line. And the Bible says that God, the Father, spits the lukewarm out of his mouth. So that tells me where that person is going. Now, for the person who is on fire for Christ, and all that person did was make the confession because of love, not because of anything else, not because of compulsion or because they fear God or because this is, this is them saying, I'm working towards heaven or I'm working yeah. towards anything other than just... Is, it's not a do for me, do uh, quid pro quo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. So for us, we believe that uh, when we that we are saved by uh, God's grace, but we also know that in the scriptures, Christ says, you know, we all accept Christ as our Savior when we're baptized, and we we accept Christ as our Savior. But we also know that Christ has said in the scriptures that if you love me, you will keep my commandments, and so. I know that oftentimes it's um, the church is specifically accused of we're trying to earn our way to heaven. And I, I know that um, when we explain it, it can seem that way, but that's not what's going on. Uh, also, when we're real quick. Yeah. Doesn't the word also say that um, uh, 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 if you are guilty of one law, then you are guilty of them all. I believe so, yeah. Yep. So, okay. Um, <laughs> it is not my intention to to, yeah. to discredit or anything of that nature. No, I'm just uh, stating my stance and what I believe, and I believe yeah. that you guys are just stating your stance on what you guys believe. Uh, so, uh, uh, with that being said, um, I don't really see too much difference <laughs> and okay. what we believe other than yeah. other than it's 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 kind of where you guys are where, where or this is what i hear i hear that 
when you when you make the when you when you when you make the confession because of love because of love you would want to follow these certain commandments and yeah. what what i'm saying is is that when a person uh, makes the confession because of love things change in their lives now it's not necessarily following certain commandments and things of that nature but they just begin to change and their old nature begins to shed off of them and they do begin to strive towards that perfection. Uh, but there is nothing that they can do mortally within themselves to please God. There's no, me and you right now, or I believe we're having church right now. And yes, that does make happy, make, make the father happy, but I make brings joy to the angels in heaven because they does say that when one person become comes into the faith that all the angels in heaven rejoice. Yeah. So we're having church right now. So yeah. as we're having church, I don't, there's, there shouldn't, my, I believe that I shouldn't be trying to convince you of anything and you shouldn't be trying to convince me of anything other than that there was a benevolent, all knowing, a uh, merciful God that is welcoming and he wants people to come into the last supper and feast and be a part of what he has to offer. Does that sound about right or my way off? Nah, that's, that's good. I, us as missionaries, we know that people have their beliefs and they're very much entitled to what they, to what they believe. Um, and yeah, it's just like you said, we're, we're here to really help people, you know, uh, feel the spirit, help them get that good feeling that you said you're feeling right now. Um, we're not here to convert or here to do anything. We're just here to invite people to come into Christ. And we feel like we're doing our part as well because you seem to be, you know, really engaged in this. And that makes us really happy. So <laughs> I'm always interested um, in how other people think on how they're with their faith and how they came to their faith. And it just, it, it blows my mind to see the capacities in which God can work. I can't have my mind so rigid to just have to believe that God is just what I believe him to be. Mm -hmm. um, that's why I'm open to conversation for anybody in any faith to tell me, hey, this is, this is what's going on. And, and, and I'm not going to knock it. I'm not going to say anything. That. I'm just going to have my stance. And they can have theirs. And at the end of the day, we brothers anyway. We our father is at our father and mother is Adam and Eve, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, let me ask this question. Is there something tangible or intangible that you would that would make life easier for you guys to fulfill the things that you were doing as missionaries? Hmm. Oh, that's a great question. You know, I guess we can kind of, kind of shed some some light, pun intended, <laughs> on like what we we uh, wish right now. Something that we're kind of struggling with. Um, just coming to something that's, you know, been always been on our mind is just how we're supposed to be able to to preach the gospel to the people in in this time during the coronavirus pandemic. Because I'm sure you've seen this happen, and I'm sure we've ex I've experienced it at least. But missionary work, you know, back in the day, um, you'd see missionaries walking around, knocking doors, and they're saying, "We have a message about Jesus Christ and about the family we'd like to share with you." Um, because of the pandemic, you know that yeah. that stuff got taken away. Right. Because we don't want to get people sick, we want to keep people safe, and we want to follow the law as well. Right. So right now kind of like some of our struggles right now is being able to share the gospel to people through these times while we can't knock doors or talk to as many people as we'd like to. Um, something that we're trying to, to actually harness, something we're trying to, to learn how to use better is technology, is being able to share, you know, the good news with everybody else. And in this short time that I've been here in the United States, because I was actually serving in, in Argentina doing this, speaking Spanish, and like going around, knocking doors, talking to people, um, and then coming here for my remaining missionary service. Kind of that, kind of something we wish we had right now is how can we just be, you know, 
natural in sharing the gospel with people so that, you know, I, I don't know. For us, we've seen that, like, a lot of people just like to spread hate to us, and we don't really understand why. You know, we just we just want to be able to teach people. And, you know, we know that the things that we teach can really help people for the better. And, you know, that's that's just something I wish we had in our hands right now, being like a scroll or something like that. You know, so like how, to, how to get people, how to find people to teach, how to help them get closer to Jesus Christ through technology. Amen. Amen. Well, I appreciate you guys. I appreciate you guys in your time. Uh, this has been Shed Some Light. I am James Barjuda. Uh, did you guys have anything that you want to promote or say as in the last word or anything of that nature? I yeah. mean, yeah. <laughs> uh, if you want to just learn more about what we believe as members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, you can just visit our um, kind of informational website called comeundochrist.org. So if you, and if you have any questions through that website, you can get in touch with missionaries and they can help answer your questions. Another reading. This is going to be a Bible verse, Matthew uh, 10, verses 28 through. else where, where are the checks and balances there's an old saying absolute power ruins absolutely haunted me to call my name so i decided to go by my middle name which is james that's the simple part for that